Peter, Matt, welcome to the music room. Um, and congratulations on the new album. Just talking to you then about seeing the advert for your album when you're out riding the tube. Yeah, we don't, neither of us really get the tube very often, so we have to make a special uh, journey to, to go and find them. Yeah, I put my bike away one day and decided I was going to go on the tube and seek them out, and I managed to find one. A, quite a journey to make this album as well. Um, quite, <laughs> quite a creative process, it took quite a long time, and took you all the way to Iceland. First of all, why Iceland? And it, you know, what is it, the soundscapes, the landscapes? Why, why did you go there? Uh, all of that stuff, I think. Um, it, it came about because our manager works with a producer in Iceland, so we kind of had um, a shortcut to to um, to work with this guy. His name's Valgus Sigurdsson. He, he did all the string arrangements on the record, um, wrote and um, and recorded all the string arrangements. So that was kind of part of the plan was to get Valgus to work in some way on the record, um, and then it kind of became apparent that. Iceland would be a cool place to do it and um, that it would, you know, that we could... We wanted to get away from all of like the distractions of being at home. Like we wanted to just go away so we could purely focus on, on making the music. So we're like, where's the best place we can do that? Iceland. <laughs> it, it was amazing. A, it was an amazing video uh, that you mm. made to so make it and the scenery is, is stunning. But also it looks like it could, if, you, if you're having a bad day, it could be quite bleak because you're in the middle of nowhere. And but I'm imagining that must just, does that help? You can clear your head, you can there focus. Were, there were certainly times where the sort of uh, cabin fever set in a little bit. Um, mm. The way we decided to make it in hindsight might have been not the, uh, not the smartest thing we've ever done. We, um, the whole band went out for the first kind of 10 days and we tracked drums and bass and then Scott and John went home and just Matt and I and Charlie Hugel and the producer we were working with spent four and a half weeks in a in an isolated studio in the in the wilderness. Um, one afternoon, the the filmmaker Jake, who's a friend of ours, who came to shoot some footage, um, I went off with him to do to drive around some landscapes and just get some shots of cool stuff. And on the way back in the evening, we pulled over to get some shots of me kind of walking with the lava fields in the background. And uh, I went to get back into the car and it had locked itself and the keys were inside, both our phones were inside. I was wearing a t-shirt and jeans. Um, we suddenly realized in, in a few moments that we were stranded in a fairly um, remote part of Iceland without even the simplest, without jumpers or, or any way of contacting anyone and no cars had gone past for 20 minutes or so. In the end, so we started to panic, we tried to break the windows and they were reinforced glass so that I had a huge rock and it just bounced completely off the window. There's a brilliant video like on Jake's phone of Pete running at the car with like a, a rock and it was just bouncing off of the window. It did nothing at all. And in the end, amazingly, someone drove past and we saw one car in the hour that we were stuck there or something and we managed to flag it down and this couple who didn't speak a word of English saw what had happened and, and drove us to the petrol station where we could get some assistance. Tell me about the tracks that you're playing for us today. Uh, let's talk about Gethsemane. Because I went to Catholic school, so immediately I'd sort of think of religious connotations. Mm. Um, what's the story behind that song? Gethsemane was the first um, song we wrote for the new record. Um, we'd come off three years or two and a half years of touring, and suddenly, we're, while we were adjusting to being at home again, um, we had to very quickly start getting the material for the next record together. And I was struggling a little bit. We'd um, I'd kind of had loads of fragments of songs lying around. I didn't really know what I wanted to, uh, where to begin, or, or how we w wanted to make a record. Um, and on, I think that was written on New Year's Day. That song, um, rather than because we'd been touring so much, I decided to have a um, like a quiet New Year's Eve with my mother. So I went back to Newbury, and Mum and I watched Jules and whatever, and then I went to bed. And then ab about six in the morning, woke up and uh, wrote Gethsemane in one sitting and uh, just kind of came from nowhere. And so for us, it kind of has a, uh, you know, a, a, a special place in our minds. Um, and then Matt and I worked it up in a, in a practice room and it, it was very straightforward, which doesn't normally happen with us. Normally, um, <laughs> there's a lot of debate, mm. spirited debate. Um, and this time that didn't seem to happen, it just put itself together.
It started with the moon, it turned in an expensive room into St. Peter's. There is a parabolic story, but it's boring, and it ends how you'd expect. Forever dressing down, I'm like a stranger Hanging round outside the kingdom hall That have carried your wedding show You could have said I was a school friend And you drag your holy horse cart in the sky When I wake up they say it's just the sun But I know that face Excavating down, you'd find the drowning And the drowned, and then there's her space you could walk to our memorial, but it's pouring And it ends how you'd expect I'd dig your dresses out and hang them round about the house And turn the lights down low Now you're everywhere I go Looking faintly disappointed And you drag your holy horse card in the sky But the devil's tricks just seem to sit so light on you They never get the marionette this tight on you Against her. 